This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we'll start working with solids. In the previous lessons, we primarily worked with surfaces or polysurfaces, but for this chapter, we'll start focusing on solids and how they can help your modeling workflow. Rhino has a large library of primitive solid shapes, and in this lesson, we'll be working primarily with those. They're available either through the menu under solid, and you can choose from the box options, sphere, cylinder, cones, truncated cones, or pyramids, and then also some of the ellipsoids, paraboloids, tubes, and pipes. Or they're also available here on the toolbar under this menu. And we'll just tear this menu off so that we can refer to it while we're in this chapter. The first item we'll look at is the box command. And this is very similar to drawing a rectangle, except now you have a third dimension to enter in data or to drag the surface up to create the box that you want. So we just click on this and it's asking for the first corner of the base. We'll just type a zero to place this at the zero, zero coordinates of our working world. And then I can either type a number to enter in a desired length and width, or I can just drag the box to visually create a shape. I'll just drag this out and click. And now you can see the command line is asking me for the height. So again, I can either type in a number or I can just visually drag this up and down to create a shape that I want. Let's go ahead and shade the perspective window by holding down Control Alt and hitting S. And that's the same as clicking on Shaded in the viewport menu. Let's go ahead and create another box. This time we'll do it by typing coordinates. So I'll click once to activate the command. First corner of the base, I'm just going to drag out here and click somewhere in space. For the other corner, I'm going to type 10. And then the width, I'll type 60. And then for the height, I'll type 5. And that'll be 5 millimeters tall. So you can see it works very similar to the rectangle curve command that we've used previously, except we have the height coordinate to add in there. Let's go ahead and just delete those. And now let's try drawing a cylinder. So I'll click on the cylinder command, and you can see the command line is now asking us to pick the base of the cylinder. This is going to be the center of the circle that describes the ends of the cylinder. Again, I'll type a zero for that. And we can just drag that, or we can type a number. Let's make this 10. I'll type a 10. And now for the height, again, I can just drag, or I can type a number. I'll just drag this up, and we'll click. I'd like to create another cylinder on top of this cylinder. I'll just click on the cylinder command. And for the base of the cylinder, if you make sure your center snap is on, just kind of float the cursor around the edge of the cylinder, and you can see it immediately snaps to the center. When you see the word center, just click. That's now put the base right on top of that cylinder. And you can either type a number or just kind of drag. And then we'll drag up, or we could drag down, or we can click both sides, and the cylinder will go on both sides of the base. And then click to apply. Let's go ahead and delete those. Spheres are also very simple. Just click the center of the sphere. You can pick anywhere in the scene, or again, I'm just going to type a zero. And then it's a matter of either typing a number or just dragging out to create your sphere. You can hold down the shift key, and that'll allow you to constrain the UV curves to 90 degree angles. And then just click when you're happy with the size of what you've created. Again, you can also snap to an endpoint to create another sphere. and so on. Ellipsoids are similar to spheres. Type a zero to place the center. And then you're just gonna drag out or type a number to place one of the sides. Click again for the other edge. Then you have the option of adding a third click to apply the third axes. So you can make your ellipsoid as tall as you want or as thin as you want depending on what look you're going for. So that's the ellipsoid. Let's delete that. There's a lot more in here. We won't be going through every single one, but please feel free to dive into these, have a look at them, 
Let's look at a few of the different ones. The first one is this truncated cone. So for the base of the truncated cone, again, I'm going to type a zero, and then we just drag or type in a number, and that'll be the actual base of the cone. Then we can drag up for the height of the cone, or again, we can type a number. Once we have that height, then we need to put in the next diameter of the truncated cone. And we can either have a smaller size, so we get a taper going up, or we can drag it larger so the taper is facing downwards. And again, we can always put in a numerical radius here. So I'll just go ahead and click, and you can see we've created a truncated cone. The pyramid is next. Again, I'll type a zero here. This is a little different than what you might be thinking of as a standard pyramid, in that we actually have a choice of numbers here. So you can see number size. I can click on this, type a four. And that would be a more traditional four-sided pyramid. Or we can add any number of sides to this. Let's make that a 10. And then we'll just drag that up. So you can see we've created a 10-sided pyramid. The tube is very similar to the cylinder. Again, we'll type a zero, make that 10 millimeter radius. And now we can either type an inner wall radius, or we can actually click here and we can type the wall thickness we would like. So if we'd like a 1.25 millimeter wall thickness, we can just type that. You can see it instantly creates that. And again, we can either drag for the height, or I'm gonna type 10 to make that a 10 millimeter tall tube. So that's the tube command. And let's look at one more. We'll look at the torus. And torus is basically a donut shape. So the center of the torus, done very much like the cylinder or the sphere, type a zero. Here's the radius. And again, drag or type a number. And then for a second diameter, you can see as I drag this, the donut shape is getting larger or smaller. And again, I can type a number or just drag and visually place this item. So there we have our donut. So as you can see, there's a lot of primitive shape options here. And depending on what your design is, you may find it easier to start with a primitive shape and either add to it or subtract from it. And we'll look at different ways to build models in a later video. That concludes our look at the primitive commands.